Did you know that without HDPE, the modern internet might never have existed? And social media as we know it may never have emerged at all. So what exactly is HDPE? How is it made? And why can a material that seems so simple play such a critical role in the global internet infrastructure? The answer lies inside massive petrochemical complexes. It is within these facilities that HDPE is produced with the strength, flexibility, and long-term stability required to protect fiber optic cables buried underground for decades at a time. In this video, the Factorin takes you inside the complete HDPE manufacturing process, starting from the very industrial plants where this material is born. HDPE does not exist in isolation. It is part of a global plastics industry worth more than $600 billion per year. Within that landscape, polyethylene is the most widely produced family of plastics, and HDPE accounts for approximately 30% to 35% of total global polyethylene output. Most of the world's HDPE production is concentrated in three key regions, the Middle East, China, and the United States. The Middle East leads thanks to its access to low-cost ethylene derived from oil and gas, enabling the construction of massive petrochemical complexes. But which country ranks second in HDPE production, right behind the Middle East? Share your opinion in the comments below. Beyond production volume, HDPE holds a unique position in the value chain due to its strong real-world recyclability. Identified by the recycling code number 2, HDPE is one of the few plastics that can be consistently collected, processed, and returned to manufacturing at true industrial scale. HDPE, or high-density polyethylene, is a thermoplastic polymer with a high molecular density, known for its mechanical strength, chemical resistance, and long service life in infrastructure applications. The production of HDPE begins with ethylene, a light hydrocarbon gas primarily extracted from crude oil or natural gas within large-scale petrochemical complexes. After being generated through the cracking process, ethylene cannot be fed directly into production. The gas must undergo rigorous purification steps to remove moisture, oxygen, and sulfur-based impurities. The quality of ethylene at this early stage directly determines the final properties and performance of the HDPE produced later on. Purified ethylene is fed into the polymerization reactor, where the formation of HDPE truly begins. Under the action of specialized catalysts, individual ethylene molecules bond together into long polymer chains with very few side branches. This reaction typically takes place at temperatures ranging from 158 degrees Fahrenheit to 230 degrees Fahrenheit, with pressure tightly controlled between 150 PNI and 450 PSI, depending on the specific technology used. The polymerization process itself lasts only a few minutes to several tens of minutes. Yet within this short window, the entire molecular structure of HDPE is defined. The length of the polymer chains is precisely adjusted to achieve the optimal balance between rigidity, pressure resistance, and the material's long-term structural stability. Once the polymer chains reach the desired structure, the reaction is halted immediately to preserve the material's properties. The reaction stream is deliberately stopped by lowering temperature, reducing pressure, or deactivating the catalyst. At this stage, HDPE polymer remains in an activated state and is highly sensitive to oxygen and heat. To prevent premature degradation, thermal stabilizers and antioxidants are added directly into the material. This step effectively locks in the molecular structure that has just been formed, ensuring that HDPE retains its mechanical performance throughout subsequent processing and across a service life that can extend for several decades. After the polymerization reaction has been stopped and the molecular structure stabilized, HDPE exists as a continuous molten polymer, typically at temperatures ranging from 390 degrees Fahrenheit to 480 degrees Fahrenheit. In this state, the material cannot be transported or used directly, so it must undergo pelletizing to standardize its form. The molten polymer is fed into a strand extrusion system where it is pressed into thin plastic strands. 
These strands then pass through a water cooling bath for a few seconds, allowing the physical structure to solidify. The cooled strands are cut by high-speed rotating knives, forming HDPE pellets with diameters of approximately 0.08 inch to 0.2 inch. Under stable operating conditions, an industrial HDPE pelletizing line can produce from a few thousand pounds to more than 20,000 pounds per hour, depending on plant capacity. What defines HDPE pellets is not their external shape, but the molecular structure that has already been programmed inside the reactor, characterized by straight polymer chains and high density, which ultimately determine the material's pressure resistance and long-term durability. Unlike general plastic pelletizing, which often involves simply melting an existing polymer and cutting it into smaller pieces for easier handling, HDPE pelletizing is primarily about preserving and standardizing properties that were fixed at the molecular level rather than altering the fundamental nature of the material itself. Before entering the market, HDPE pellets must pass through a rigorous quality control system. Each production batch is sampled to measure density, melt flow index, and mechanical strength. The melt flow index, or MFI, is typically tested at a temperature of approximately 374 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure the pellets can be processed consistently on extrusion and molding lines. In addition, the pellets are inspected for size uniformity and impurity content, because even a minor deviation can cause defects across thousands of feet of pipe or downstream products. Only batches that meet all required specifications are approved, classified, and released from the plant. HDPE, in pellet form, is essentially just an intermediate material within a much longer production chain. Its most visible value does not lie in consumer packaging, but in HDPE pipelines that quietly transport clean water and protect internet infrastructure beneath the ground. So how are these small plastic pellets transformed into pipes capable of operating reliably for decades? Let's follow the process now as we step into the manufacturing of HDPE water pipes. The manufacturing of HDPE water pipes begins with the preparation and blending of resin pellets, where the raw material is brought into a ready state for the thermal processing that follows. Virgin HDPE pellets, typically grades specifically designed for pressure pipe applications, are stored in sealed silos to minimize the intrusion of moisture and contaminants. Before feeding into the line, the pellets are precisely weighed to ensure a stable and consistent blending ratio throughout continuous operation. Alongside the HDPE resin, a small amount of functional additives is introduced into the mixing system. These additives include thermal stabilizers that allow the material to withstand prolonged heating inside the extruder, antioxidants that limit property degradation caused by heat and air, and in many outdoor applications, carbon black added at a typical concentration of 2 to 3% to enhance ultraviolet resistance. The entire mixture must be thoroughly homogenized because uneven additive distribution can lead to variations in color, strength, or mechanical performance across the pipe wall. After blending, the resin pellets are continuously conveyed into the extruder feed hopper, ready for the heating and melting stage. As the screw begins to rotate, the material is drawn along the length of the barrel and passes through a series of sequential heating zones. Temperature is set to rise progressively from the feed section to the discharge end, commonly within the range of 390 degrees Fahrenheit to 480 degrees Fahrenheit allowing the pellets to soften, deform, and fully transition into a molten state. During this movement, the screw simultaneously pushes the material forward while generating shear forces, ensuring that the molten HDPE is thoroughly mixed and reaches a high level of homogeneity. The molten polymer gradually accumulates at the end of the barrel, forming a stable pressure zone ahead of the die. Throughout the process, temperature and pressure sensors mounted along the barrel continuously monitor operating conditions, ensuring the melt flow remains steady, uniform, and fully prepared for the subsequent shaping stage. The molten HDPE stream exits the extruder and is fed directly into the shaping die head, the component that directly determines the pipe's initial form. Inside the die head, the molten polymer is redistributed 
through an internal channel system, spreading evenly around the circumference to create a symmetrical flow pattern. At the die gap, the molten plastic is formed into a continuous hollow cylinder, while key geometric parameters, such as outer diameter, inner diameter, and wall thickness, are precisely established. The die head typically consists of a central mandrel and an outer die ring, with the gap between these two elements defining the pipe wall. Pressure generated by the extruder forces the HDPE through this narrow opening at a controlled rate, producing a continuous pipe that extends along the production line axis. At the moment it exits the die, the material remains soft and retains significant residual heat, but its geometric shape has already been clearly defined. As the HDPE pipe exits the die head, it is immediately guided into the cooling system, where its geometric shape begins to be locked in. This stage typically takes place inside a water cooling tank that extends along the axis of the production line. The water temperature and flow rate are carefully controlled, allowing direct contact with the outer surface of the pipe to dissipate heat evenly. At the same time, a vacuum system is applied to hold the pipe firmly against the calibration sleeve, ensuring roundness and concentricity throughout the cooling process. As the pipe moves through the tank, the temperature of the HDPE gradually drops from a molten state to a stable solid form. This transition occurs continuously over several tens of seconds to a few minutes, depending on the pipe diameter and wall thickness. Throughout the entire cooling length, the pipe is kept precisely aligned to prevent twisting or axial deviation. The outer surface progressively becomes rigid and dimensionally stable, while the internal structure continues to settle into the predefined shape. By the time the pipe exits the cooling system, the HDPE pipe has achieved fixed geometric dimensions and sufficient stiffness to proceed smoothly along the production line. After cooling and reaching sufficient surface rigidity, the HDPE pipe enters the haul-off unit, where rubber-coated pull belts grip the pipe and keep it moving continuously along the production line axis. The haul-off speed is synchronized with the extrusion rate, maintaining consistent pipe length and wall thickness throughout the entire run. During this stage, laser measurement systems are positioned around the pipe to monitor outer diameter and roundness in real time, feeding continuous data directly into the central control system. Immediately after the haul-off unit, the pipe passes through the technical marking station. Printing is typically performed using industrial inkjet printers or contact roller printing systems, applying specialized inks designed to adhere reliably to HDPE surfaces. Technical information is printed continuously along the pipe length, including nominal diameter, pressure rating, applicable technical standards, production date, and batch identification code. The repetition interval of the printed markings is precisely controlled to ensure traceability along the entire pipe, even after cutting or installation. After the technical markings are completed, the HDPE pipe continues along the line toward the cutting or coiling section. For large diameter pipes, an automated cutting system is used to divide the pipe into standard length segments. The cutting blade operates in precise synchronization with the line speed, producing clean, flat cuts that are perpendicular to the pipe axis. For small and medium diameter pipes, the pipe is guided into a coiling machine, where it is gradually bent and wound into compact, continuous coils. These coils are neatly formed and secured, making them ready for efficient transportation and storage. Before leaving the production line, HDPE pipes undergo a final quality inspection to confirm that all technical parameters have been maintained consistently. Pipe samples are taken from each batch to measure diameter, wall thickness, and roundness, then compared against the specifications printed along the pipe surface. Selected samples are placed into pressure testing equipment where the pipes are filled with water and held under pressure for a defined period of time to evaluate sealing integrity and pressure resistance. In parallel, both the inner and outer surfaces of the pipe are visually inspected to detect any defects that may have formed during the extrusion process. After quality inspection is completed, HDPE pipes are transferred to the on-site packaging area within the plant. Straight pipe sections are stacked in parallel bundles and carefully aligned to prevent bending or deformation during storage. 
Each bundle is secured with plastic strapping or coated steel bands, with tension precisely controlled to avoid damaging the pipe walls. For coiled pipes, the coils are fastened with circular restraints and placed onto pallets or dedicated support frames to maintain a stable, round shape. The package pipes are then moved to the staging area, where they await loading onto trucks, shipping containers, or rail transport, depending on delivery distance and logistics requirements. During handling, forklifts or specialized lifting equipment are used to minimize impact and prevent surface damage. HDPE pipes are typically transported without excessive stacking loads, ensuring that their shape and mechanical properties remain intact until they arrive at the installation site. From invisible ethylene molecules to HDPE pipelines buried deep underground, this entire process reveals how a material that seems simple on the surface becomes a foundation of modern infrastructure. HDPE rarely appears in everyday life, yet it quietly transports clean water, protects fiber optic cables, and supports the systems we rely on every single day. Understanding how HDPE is made also offers a clearer view into the industrial world operating behind the familiar routines of modern life. If you found this video useful, like the video to support the factor and leave a comment to let us know which manufacturing process you would like us to explore next and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future stories about the materials and production lines shaping the modern world.